Time for us now to get into a conversation uh, this evening. And like I told you at the beginning of the broadcast, we are engaging uh, the principal secretary in charge of culture, the arts and heritage. Her name is Madam Umi Bashir, CBS, who joins us in studio for that conversation. And generally, we're just looking at um, Kenya's idea of conservation, particularly on the cultural and um, the arts as well as heritage. And also, we'll be having a special focus on artifact. That is quite an important conversation we are having. Let me just bring her on set, Madam Umi Bashir, CBS, the PS for Culture, the Arts and Heritage. How are you? I'm very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me mm. this evening. Karibu sana. Uh, probably to uh, start us off, begin by defining the mandate bestowed on your State Department, what you do on a daily basis. Okay. Yeah. So what we do in the State Department of Culture, <laughs> Arts and Heritage, <laughs> we uh, preserve and uh, safeguard all our cultures, <laughs> our heritage, and the assets that we have as a country. <laughs> So we're giving this, we're given this um, authority by Article 11 of the Constitution, where we talk about our cultures and the importance of our cultures, and our cultures being the backbone of our society. Mm. So we have different sagas uh, within our State Department. We deal with culture, the arts and heritage, but under that, we have uh, heroes. We deal with our heroes. Mm. We deal with um, uh, Bomas of Kenya. We deal with the National Museums of Kenya, where we curate preserve all our um, um, uh, heritage, the assets that we have as a country. We also have what we call the Kenya Cultural Center, where we have performances, arts, and talents are nurtured. Mm. We also have um, the PPMC, which deals with music. So under culture, culture is where now all that we do is ensure that we appreciate our cultures and we inculcate uh, the appreciation of cultures in our children. Mm. So it's a state department that is under the Ministry of Gender, culture and arts and heritage and at the same time we have things like uh, Ushanga. Ushanga is the yeah. bead work, the mm -hmm. bead work initiative mm -hmm. where we empower women and make sure that they get uh, money in their pockets mm -hmm. and not just um, uh, a project whereby we showcase beautiful items and products but at the same time the women get to benefit. Mm -hmm. So it's a state department that deals with a vast array of different ways of safeguarding our cultures ensuring that hundreds of years from now, our, um, our heritage sites will still be standing and still uh, will have a functional cultural and diplomatic um, community. Absolutely. It's good you mentioned about the Ushanga Initiative. We'll be talking about Women's Day a little bit later, of course, as we, as we wind up. But it's important you mention about culture. Mm -hmm. um, and other than the cultural diversity that Kenya enjoys, so much so that reflected in community is, does Kenya have a national culture? What we can say, we are different people but we have this culture that is called the Kenyan culture. Well, we don't have one specific culture mm -hmm. as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. We are 46 different communities and we all have different upbringing, different religion, but we don't have a specific culture as a Kenyan culture. Mm -hmm. We have the Matatu culture, which we share. We have um, music, which we share, but at the same time, my music and your music are different. Mm. What we're doing as a national government is coming up with a national dress that would be used as a means of uniting everybody in the country. Mm -hmm. So what you have as uh, when you wear for your rurashio, for instance, uh, functions, for instance, uh, bath, mm. deaths, weddings, what you wear in your community is not what I would wear in mine. So there's no way we can have one particular uh, culture. Mm. But we have the culture of... Uh, of um, uh, unity when we meet out there in the diaspora. If you see me wearing a Kenyan bracelet, uh -huh. or, you know, you'll say, oh, you're Kenyan. And that is what attracts all of us to be like united mm. next, when we're outside there. Yeah. But when we're here, we have things dividing us like politics, mm. different opinions, <laughs> yeah. you know. But at the end of the day, it is so hard to come together and say that this is our national dress. So what we're trying to do is come up with a, a dress whereby we inculcate every community so if it's the Kikuyu, if it's the Kalenjin, if it's the Somali, if it's the Swahilis, we bring about our designers and involve everyone. So if it's different provinces that will have different mm -hmm. designers coming together and showcasing competitively what they want the Kenyan dress to be. So it's not going to be just one dress where we're going to say everybody should wear this dress. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we have um, a dress that when you wear, 
um, I will not l be feeling left out. Mm. And um, there's no particular Kenyan culture because uh, what you eat, let's say your, your, your gastronomy, mm. where you come from and mm. where I come from are different. But when you eat, let's say, uh, Mokimo, mm. or when I test Mokimo and you have Anjera, we have yet to appreciate those different cultures mm. that we have. And um, that is actually what uh, 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 defines us as a Kenyan people. Mm. So uh, you find our children all speaking Swahili in school. When they go back home, they speak their mother tongue. Mm. But then we have a community where if you speak Swahili or vernacular in school, you're told, give them the disc. You remember the disc mm. in, in school? <laughs> you have to call it yeah. Munto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to speak English. Yeah. So you find English being cool. When you speak English, oh, it's fancy. Yeah. But when you speak your mother tongue, it's like, ah, no, no, you're not supposed to. So it gets the kids to think, oh, you know what? Uh, maybe I'm not supposed to be. Being cultural is not cool. Mm. So those are uh, kind of ups and downs that we have as a country. But at the same time, was, we're working with the Ministry of Education to see how we can inculcate this appreciation, appreciation of our cultures and also making culture cool again. Mm. Yeah. Indeed. Let's talk about artifacts. Um, as a critical part of our history, what are the techniques that your department is using to preserve artifacts? We'll talk about the ones probably stolen by <laughs> the people who came before us. But let's yeah. talk about the ones that we have first. Yeah. What are the techniques of preservation that you have in your department? Okay. So what we do at the National Museums of Kenya mm -hmm. is... Uh, ensure that the, the, the fossils and the objects that we get in the field, this is from Turkana, mm. Olga Saile, these are objects that have been there for years. And with time, they get um, to be, uh, of course, the, the texture, texture begins to change, but there are researchers and scientists who specifically deal with mm. that. So what we do is we have um, a scientist who specifically use the right chemicals and use the right um, 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 uh, combination of, of, uh, of chemicals mm. to ensure that they safeguard this. At the NMK, we have the original Turkana boy. And the original Turkana boy, we do not display it anywhere because you can never find another Turkana boy. And mm -hmm. so for us to display it is going to erode the whole, um, the whole aspect of originality in it, whereby if someone touches it and over years you'll find that you might even break it. So what we do, we have a vault at the NMK where we safeguard this. And at the same time at NMK, we have a whole department that deals with ensuring that the curators actually understand and see how those fossils and objects are, are, are kept in such a mm. standard that mm. years and years to come, they'll still, still be functional. So we also sell casts. What, is, what I mean by that is we take the NMK and we, uh, the NMK, uh, the fossil, the Turkana boy fossil that we have there. The Turkana boy fossil was found in the year 1984 in Turkana. And it, is, uh, it was then uh, one, uh, uh, one, uh, 106 uh, million years ago is when it was found. Mm. So you find that in such a situation, we cannot be sh showcasing this uh, artifact. So mm. what we do is um, create uh, uh, casts, like samples of the same. So you purchase ah, it from okay. us. So when you have it, like Uru Gardens, we have one, but it's not the original. And you find in America, in British Museum, there is a similar one, but it's not the real one. So the only one where you'll find, find the same in the whole world is only Kenya. So we take these artifacts very seriously. And the fact that um, some of our artifacts have been stolen and they're not here anymore. And as Kenya, we have never, we never ratified a very important convention that mm. would put us at, a, at the table where we have a say called the 1970 UNESCO Convention on uh, the uh, uh, illicit and uh, uh, export and import <laughs> of these uh, stolen artifacts. So you'll find that since 1970, we never ratified this convention as a country, oh. which that means is you cannot have a say in saying that give us back our artifacts, mm. while in fact you are not part of the uh, member states that have ratified this convention. Mm. So uh, we did that as a country last year, and I'm very happy about that because as a regime, you'll find that that was one of the very important and key uh, uh, promises His Excellency the President made to the people of Kenya. Mm. And once we ratified that convention, we have a seat at the table right now. So we can have a conversation where we're saying, listen, British Museum, you have our artifacts hanging in your museums, in your exhibitions, and we want them back. And mm. we're not asking politely, we're demanding <laughs> for them. Of course, there's diplomacy involved for policy involved but at the end of the day you find have these African countries like for instance the other day um, Nigeria asked for the artifacts in the year 2021 we as Kenya have not like officially asked for it mm. yes there are communities that the, the, the organizations that uh, have been doing that but uh, for us to have that conversation is first of all to ratify the 
convention, which mm. we did last year, mm -hmm. last year mm -hmm. then cap, come up with a policy on matters restitution of yeah. our artifacts. Mm -hmm. And restitution, when you're given these artifacts, the skull of Koitalel Arab Samoy, for instance, um, never found. We keep saying, is it in Hungary? Is it in uh, the British Museum? Where exactly is mm. it? And you find that once we trace that, we know exactly where it is. We had a certain um, inventory uh, 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 research done by the, uh, through the Germans who funded us as government. But we did the, 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 the implementation of that as government, that we found 37,000 uh, objects and artifacts missing and in different um, museums and institutions belonging to the Republic belonging of Kenya. Belonging to us. So you see, it's a conversation that we need to take seriously. Okay. Look, okay. And not just take seriously because once you're given, we are given back our objects, mm. where are we going to put them? That's a conversation we need to uh -huh. have. Okay, so are you going to give these skulls back to the community um, and the person you're giving back to, uh, do they practice these cultural practices still or their ancestors practice this and right now they're Christians so they're not interested in practicing mm -hmm. what you practice. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, the Vigango. The Vigango is where now the Griyama people have um, this um, sort of spiritual beings that they have in, in uh, wooden sticks that plaques that they put outside the house and the huts of someone who dies, a spiritual leader. So this was stolen and taken to America, for instance. And last year we got 85 Vigangos back to the country. Mm. And we gave this back to the community in the Kaya Forest in, in uh, Kilifi County. So you see, for us, first of all, the important thing was ensuring that we have a policy framework that works, not just ratifying an, a convention and the other, uh, at the end of the day, we don't have a policy that, safe, that, that, that um, supports this yeah. ratification. Mm. So I think we're headed in the right direction whereby I think in the next 10 or five years, we should be having um, half if not all of our artifacts back in the country. Mm, quite an interesting yeah. conversation. Probably before we take uh, um, a breather, you talk about the policy and obviously ratification. Is the legal requirement so far, or that policy as is, is it sufficient enough now to advance that cost of repatriating um, artifacts that are still in foreign countries? Is the legal regime enough? Yes, uh -huh. you know, the thing is, uh, the, fo the policy framework for restitution and reparation of artifacts is what we are working on currently. Mm -hmm. And once we have that in place, we are more than ready to move and have a diplomatic conversation. Of course, it's a multifaceted um, uh, 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 discussion where we'll not be the only ones doing it as a ministry and as a state department. But of course, we will have MFA, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh -huh. to, to, to be involved. We'll have the AG's office to be involved, of course, the executive. And uh, you'll find that it's a conversation which other countries are more than willing to take. Ghana, for instance, the other day, they're being told that they will be loaned their artifacts which were stolen from them. You see, now the conversation is, <laughs> we will loan you this, but you give them back to us after some time. Yeah. We don't want to be loaned. We as Kenya demand and want our artifacts back yeah. home so that our, 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 our uh, what do you call, our people and our skulls and our beings can rest in peace finally. That aside, money is being made mm -hmm. in these museums mm -hmm. by showcasing the stolen um, objects. For instance, the Kitty Chayenzi, which was stolen uh, and, and we have uh, the Mazrui drum, mm. which was stolen from Mombasa. These are sentimental um, objects whereby the people believe that a leader should sit on a certain seat to feel like he's a leader king mm. of a kingdom. And uh, right now, we find that uh, the Germans, for instance, are very, very uh, okay, and they're more than willing to give us back these objects. We're ha actually having that discussion with the ambassador, and of course through MFA. And this is a conversation that I really enjoy and I'm passionate about, because I know that we shall make a difference in this country. Because this is a conversation that has just been spoken in boardrooms. But you see, you cannot solve everything mm, sitting mm, in a boardroom. Mm, yeah. Mm. All right, let's take out a breather. And then when you come back, uh, because I've had you mention Germany, America, and Britain are some of the countries where mm. Kenya's artifacts are. And probably you'll give us details on other countries, probably. Because, I mean, these are a lot of artifacts um, that are still trapped out there. We're taking a breather. Coming back in a minute. Don't go too far. And I think every day is a learning day. Um, and I'll admit tonight is really a learning day uh, for me. P.S. 37,000 artifacts out there. Um, yes. And you mentioned Germany, Britain, and America, some of the countries really, that have our, let's say, illicit, Ill illegally trafficked mm -hmm. um, artifacts. Yeah. What other countries really uh, have our artifacts? Mostly, mm. it's the British in different institutions, mm -hmm. the Pitt Rivers Museum, mm. uh, the British Museum itself, mm -hmm. 
and uh, the Honeyman Museum. But at the same time, uh, you'll find the majority of this are specifically in Germany, the Briti Britain, and um, in America. In the States, for instance, we have the, the, the man-eaters of Savo. The, elef the lions themselves, mm. the heads that, <coughs> the, you know the history that's there when they were doing the railway mm. and, and the man-eaters were there. So they were taken to be studied and now they're in a museum called the Field Museum in Illinois, in Chicago. And uh, it is ours, you see it, but you cannot go in there, pick them and take them back home. Yeah. So they, there's, um, yeah. There are a lot of artifacts and, and, and objects out there, but there are countries that are more than willing to, to have that diplomatic conversation and see how we can get our artifacts back. Of course, there's so much history behind it. How are they taken? Um, and, and, and you'll find that there's so much um, passion and so much emotion in it. For instance, when the missionaries came, you'll find that you'll find that we were told to, 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 to close our eyes and pray and things were taken from right mm. under mm. our noses. Mm. So these are some of the things that are taken from right under our uh, noses. Mm. Um, and um, you'll find that uh, during that time it was military uh, interventions and uh, another time it was basically forceful uh, interventions. Like when you're told, um, you know, uh, the, the witch, what called, witchcraft act came mm. about, where you're told what you're using, the cultural artifacts that you're using in your homes are illegal. So you need to get rid of all of them. So by getting rid of all of them, you're giving them to us mm. as the British and we're taking them back home to our museums to showcase them and get money out of yeah. them. So yeah, so for us, um, it's not about uh, which country actually mm. have this. What matters is uh, the number, the institutions, and are they willing to have these diplomatic uh, conversations between mm. ourselves as Kenya mm. and them. Now, the ratification of this uh, convention of mm. 1970, <laughs> has actually given us uh, a seat at that table where we can say that, listen, it's about time we got this, these artifacts back. But then we also have to be prepared as a country. Once we get these objects, um, do we have enough uh, spaces in our museums mm. to safeguard these artifacts? Do our curators now understand the, the importance and um, the, 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 you know, the degree of importance these uh, objects have, given that they've been away for more than 50, 60 years? Mm. So what we're trying to do as NMK is create space for that, space for that, because we are in, uh, working with an, in an anticipation of getting the objects back, given that we've ratified this. So the State Department of Culture, Arts and Heritage, uh, we are coming up with a policy on restitution and this mm. is a very important policy one of a kind and being a patriotic Kenyan every Kenyan should be very proud of that particular policy all right yeah let's talk about um, uh, that patriotism uh, you're making reference to and particularly on how the country can uh, gain from it because the president has consistently mentioned about the crowd of mankind mm -hmm. informing even the policy taken uh, just the other day on visa yes, entry yes. into yeah. the Republic yeah because we can't just be talking about restitution of these artifacts just for the sake of it. Yes. How does the country, through your department and of course um, your colleagues mm -hmm. in government, mm -hmm. plan to capitalize on this, yes. at least for the country to make a dime? Yeah, mm -hmm. actually that's a very good question yeah. because um, you see, we're looking at a situation where uh, currently we have uh, tourists of around uh, 1.2 million mm. annually. And, uh, Given that we're having this visa-free um, 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 narrative that we're driving right now and actualizing, the, uh, the cradle of humankind is, uh, has been mentioned before in South Africa, yeah. but what we're talking about is home of human origins. Home of human origins means the original home of humanity is Kenya. Mm. So what we're doing is coming up with a state-of-the-art mega science park in Turkana, mm. whereby we will uh, have uh, all the artifacts there that we have in, a, in the country, including the original Turkana boy, we will have a situation whereby we have uh, uh, um, the tourists going there to see this. That aside, there's, there'll be hotels, not five-star or high-end hotels, but at the same time, so mm -hmm. to experience the Turkana uh, culture, uh, have Ushanga there also. And um, for us, we're having these uh, conversations uh, with the diaspora, of course, through uh, MFA, and see how uh, when tourists come, we just don't talk about welcome back home, narrative but we mm -hmm. actually have a tangible uh, uh, products that they can see mm -hmm. culture for instance when you come when you talk about cultural uh, tourism you come you go to the Mara you come you go to uh, Mombasa to the ocean and what we usually what used to happen is you talk about the beach and and the bush that is the Mara mm -hmm. and and the and the, the Mombasa mm -hmm. being the Diani beach and whatnot but now we're changing that because it's become boring and it's overdone uh, you know the big five 
Now, we're going with this narrative of saying welcome back home. When, yes. you welcome, when you welcome back home, it's not just you and me as Kenyans, it's everyone in the globe. Chinese, Americans, anybody, Russians, you come and this is home. Mm. So when you go home, you want to go and see where you were originally, where you came from. <laughs> so you go to Turkana. So you find this science park, yeah. and at the same time, our numbers is what we are looking at increasing, the number of tourists. We're looking at from 1.2 to 5 million uh, tourists annually. That is uh, once we're done with the science park. Mm. Other, another thing is value addition to the things and the products that we have, the creatives do in our country. We have the Kamba carvings, we have the Kisi Soapstone, mm. uh, we have the Lamu Kofias and the Chondos. You see, by value addition now, this Ushanga, the beaded products, are uh, being uh, uh, fixed on that Ushanga, the, the Chondo. We have the Lamu Kofias. And, and uh, when a tourist comes, they don't have to go specifically to Mara to go and buy this, or they don't have to go to Kajado or specific places or Lamu to buy that Kofia. We have a situation where we're coming up with an app called Sana App, an application where it's an online application where you can buy all these products. So you're sitting in the comfort of your office and you buy a Lamu Kofia from Lamu, yeah. a Kisi Soapstrom from Kisi, and it's delivered to you. Yeah. So we're moving with a trend whereby you can buy things from the comfort of your home, from yeah. the comfort of your office, because this is a digital uh, 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 time and a digital era. So we are going with a trend and we're trying our best to make culture cool again and this is the way to make culture and collect. Absolutely. Clearly, this is a conversation um, that we need to have even more and more. But I have about just two minutes mm -hmm. uh, before we wind up. And I want us very quickly to switch um, uh, to Women Affairs because International Women's Day is coming. A youthful woman from a minority community. Do you think we are getting there in terms of enhancing women's rights? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, know, uh, you know, let me tell you. Women are at the epicenter of power, uh, epicenter of education, and epicenter of development in this country. Mm -hmm. You'll find that um, as a ministry, we, have, uh, we, are, we are implementing the, the whole idea of the two-third gender rule. Mm -hmm. And we're supporting these women who are at the bottom of the pyramid by doing what? By empowering them financially, economically, uh, empowering them by training them uh, on life skills that will give them um, livelihoods and put pocket money in their pockets. Myself, for instance, I come from Ajia County, mm. a county that is known for women who are not educated and women who are, you know, this patriarchy and uh, women not developing in such a way that uh, they'd be appreciated in society. But here I am, I'm a peers, thanks to His Excellency the President, and we're given a chance because we have been given a seat at the table and for us, we help empower other women. And you're a lawyer. Oh yeah, I'm a lawyer, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so it's, the, it's International Women's Day yeah. on, on Friday, yeah. um, and we're really excited about that, and we're going to celebrate that uh, as women in this country, because, um, you know, once you empower or educate a girl child, you educate a whole community. Mm. So for me, it's an exciting time, and uh, I'm really looking forward to empowering more girls and mentoring them and making sure that once I leave this place, more girls will have a, a seat on this table. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Peter Sumi Bashir, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Probably your last word on that camera, what you, you'd want to be your last word or your assurance to Kenyans on okay. this camera here. Okay. I intend to make culture cool again, and I need you to help me make culture cool again. Thank you. Wow. You practice that? No. <laughs> Say it again. I intend to make culture cool again, and I need you to help me make culture cool again. Thank you. Hey, okay. Louis <laughs> <laughs> Bashir, CBS, the PS Culture, the Arts and Heritage speaking to us, and of course, like he had 37,000 artifacts belonging to the Republic of Kenya still trapped out there. But of course, the ministry is doing a lot, really, in terms of ensuring that we repatriate all those to the Republic of Kenya so they can help you and me. So help her. We help. Good night. <laughs> God bless. <laughs>